Me too. Folks, when I was a kid, I used to have a very vivid imagination, and I used to hope and pray that something terrible would happen so that I could use it to my advantage. Par exemple, I would go into a grocery store with my parents, and I would hope and pray to God that some psycho would come to the grocery store with a big knife, and he'd grab this pretty girl and hold her hostage, and he'd be like, all right, I'm going to cut this girl's head off and I somehow am the one that tackles and disarms the man, saves the girl, saves the day. People pick me up on their shoulders and carry me out of the store, and the girl and I eventually date for a little while. <laughs> but even as a kid of, say, 15, I knew that that was A, not very realistic, and B, frankly, too dangerous. So that daydream of mine quickly turned into a psycho comes into the grocery store and he's got this big knife and he grabs this pretty girl and holds her hostage and he's like, all right, I'm gonna cut this girl's head off unless someone here can answer these rage against the machine trivia questions. <laughs> Something I could easily do at the time. I bumped into a friend of mine from high school at a bar recently. We were pals back then, but I hadn't seen her since. And she said that since high school, she went to massage school. And she also said that since high school, she discovered that she is psychic. So she has spent the last several years trying to focus her psychic energies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would describe my scoff as audible. <laughs> so we made this bet. She told me, think of a celebrity. Who's the one celebrity, living or dead, that you'd like to have dinner with? The one celebrity you feel the most connected to? And focus on that celebrity. And she told me that if she could guess it, I'd have to pay for her drinks all night. And if she couldn't, she'd pay for mine. Well, I'll fast forward to the end of the little yarn I'm spinning. <laughs> After five guesses, she paid for my drinks all night as she was unable to guess Grave Digger the Monster Truck. I was lucky enough to have my parents inside my apartment last weekend. And I'm gonna say this first thing just because I don't want all the perverts in here to get monster chubs. So I'm just gonna get it out of the way. At one point while my parents were over, I was in the kitchen and my mom was in the bathroom. There, get over it. She comes out of the bathroom and she walks up to me, dead silent, stone-faced, doing this. And I was like, what? What is it? You okay? And then she said, no towels. And then I said a word I've never said to my mother before in my life when I asked her, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> this isn't the towel hut, mom. You got a shirt and pants on like a normal person, just give her one of those. There you go, case closed. What happened to my nice, sweet, kind, innocent old mother? A bent over immigrant wearing a rag clutching a pie. Where did she go? Now I've got this ultra confident drama queen that is going around telling it like it is. I knew we shouldn't have let you go zip lining. Too liberating. I'm an only child. Is anybody else here an only child? Great. Well, then I'm sure you'll agree with me when I say to everybody else that as an only child, I find your interactions and relationships with your siblings to be strange and often disgusting. <laughs> I have a friend with, I don't know, 20 or 30 brothers and sisters, and they all love each other so much, and they spend six months a year up at his family's cottage where they do things like play survivor games from the show and do sing-along campfire songs and make each other friendship bracelets, I assume. <laughs> to me, that's crazy because when I get together with my family, it's me and two other people that are noticeably way older than me. <laughs> and we sit silently in an empty white room facing away from each other, just sharpening knives. <laughs> I 
I don't want to hype this up too much because if I hype it up too much, it's going to ruin it for you. So it's just the kind of thing where you have to go and you'll see it and you'll get it. So I'm not hyping this up too much. But when you do end up going to my parents' house, you'll see their autographed Bob Saget headshot. <laughs> which has only recently been put in a gold frame. And uh, they got it because in the late 80s, my parents were lucky enough to go to a taping of America's Funniest Home Videos. They met Bob Saget, he was super nice, signed a headshot for them, and now it's their pride and joy, sadly. <laughs> so you'll see it when you go. And you can actually look up a clip on YouTube of Bob Saget like throwing to some video in the late 80s, and you can see my parents' little heads in the background. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? <laughs> The bad thing is they were there because they had submitted a video called Baby Eats Own Dick. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. This was a lot of fun. Thank you.